Here we are in Blender 2.5, 2.5, 7 stable is what I'm using. And I'm just going to go over a different way of doing something, uh, or using different tools to do uh, another project. Uh, okay, that makes explain better. Uh, if you ever watched This Week in Linux, Jordan Keyes does a, uh, you know, a few videos a week on Linux news. If you don't watch his channel, I would suggest subscribing to it. He will do a very great job of keeping you up to date on news issues re regarding to Linux. But um, right here, he just did a video. Uh, he uses Caden Live, which I do as well for a majority of my video editing. Uh, but each of his videos ends with this little screenshot here uh, talking about uh, basically giving you little links to other previous videos he's done and blogs. And he just did a tutorial using Caden Live and some... Uh, uh, layers and compositing to create this and that works great and I'm just going to show you another option uh, for Blender users to do basically the same thing in Blender um, and uh, if you're used to Blender it's actually pretty simple if you're not it may seem a little complicated but here we go here's our default view in Blender 2.5 I'm going to delete that default cube I'm also going to hit T to hide that little uh, option bar over there I'm going to hit one of my number pads to go to front view and control alt zero to move my camera to there. So far so good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit space bar and I'm going to type in text and choose add text. I'm going to hit R and type X90 to rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. And there's our text. I'm going to come over here to our font tab with that selected. And we're going to go down here. You can choose a different font uh, and import just a uh, true type font files and choose whether you want bold, italicized, and whatever. Uh, we're just going to go with the default uh, font here. Uh, I am going to choose down here to center the text. And then I am just going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And I am going to type in, just as he has in his video, check out my latest two, oops, two videos here. Okay, it's a little big. You can use just a scaling tool or just change the size here. I'm going to put it down to, let's just go about 0.55. That might be a little small, but we can always change it later. I'm going to grab it on the Z-axis, move it up here. Then I'm going to add a material, new material. White is good, which is pretty much what it is. We're going to put shadeless. That's so lighting doesn't affect it, so we'll always be white regarding, regardless of our lighting effect here. Now that we got that done, I'm going to hit Shift-D and hit Z to move it on the Z-axis. And basically, we just clone that. Shift-D clones. And then Z means move it straight up and down. That way, we don't lose any left to right movement on here. Everything's centered. And then I can just go Tab here, and I can type the next line out. And the latest video on my second channel here. Tab to get out of edit mode, select next one, tab to edit that. And remember to like, I'm going to type it like he has with a capital L, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Perfect. Once again, we can, if we want to adjust the size of these a little bit, I think that looks pretty good. Um, if we hit F12 now, we're going to have a kind of a gray background with the white words. Looking good. Hit Escape. If we click on this little icon of the globe here, it brings us to our world settings. I'll click Horizon and set that all the way down to black. Now if we hit F12 again to render out, we have those words on a black background. Now we just need to add in our videos, and we're just going to create some planes to put those videos on. So I'm going to hit Space. I'm going to type in Plane add plane, RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis, and then S for scale, X for X axis, and I'm just going to eyeball the size of the video. You know, if it's a widescreen video, you may want to make it wider. If it's not, make it smaller. And then I'm going to grab and move that right up here. I'm going to hit Shift D, and I cloned it, and you can see I move it all around. If I hit X, it locks into the X uh, axis there, and I can move it over so they're properly aligned. Shift D again to move it down here. Now we just need to add our video, so I'm going to click the first one, Material, New, Shadeless, 
texture, new, clouds, image map. I know I'm going kind of fast, but um, if you're a Blender user, you should be used to all this, and I'm just trying to give you a general idea here. So we chose from the drop down here, image or movie. I'm gonna click open, and I'm gonna to go to just some videos I'll have. I'll go to this originals folder. These are uh, tutorials I've recorded before I've edited them and put an intro and outro like I have on my videos. I'll choose one here, I'll choose this one here. And there it is. Right now it's kind of a still image. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say match movie length, and then we're gonna say auto refresh and uh, that will animate that video. Now if I scroll through my frames here, you notice it doesn't really look like that video is moving. That's because the first few seconds of that video, um, I'm talking and nothing's happening on the screen. If you want to jump further into the video, you can offset the frames here. So I'll put in something like a thousand, because right now this video clip is uh, over almost 9,000 frames. So there we go. And um, now we'll do the same exact thing Again, for the next uh, clip, add a material, make it shadeless, add a texture, new, image or movie, open, go to where you have your videos at, I'll choose this one here, open, again, match movie length, and uh, auto refresh, and if you want to start further in the video, you can offset it some, click the last plane here, uh, Material, new, shadeless, texture, new. And you see I'm going fast, but it's the same thing over and over again. So type is going to be image or movie, open, go to where I have my videos. I'm going to choose one right here. This one's called photos. It's one of the tutorial I'm going to be doing soon. It looks black because the first second or two of that video is black or first frame or so. I'm going to auto refresh and I'll offset this one by... Um, it's not very long. I'll just say five frames. So there you go. You can see the image start to come in. So now, uh, depending on how long I want this video to be, let's hit F12 real quick to see how this looks. Everything looks good. This one looks kind of small, and that's just because the edge of that video is black. It's probably not the best for this uh, option. If I go forward a few more frames, here we go, and hit F12, you'll see that it does do the whole video there. So we got a good look. All we have to do is go to our render options here, set the end frame. So 30 frames a second is basically what we're gonna do. Actually right now it's set to uh, 24, but let's first choose dimensions. We have some presets here. I'll choose um, 1080p uh, HDTV. And uh, we'll set this to 30 frames a second and we'll set it to 300 frames. That'll make a 10 second video for us. I'm going to choose the output type. I'm going to choose XVID, but there's a lot of different presets here, and you can also adjust them under encoding if you wanted to, uh, you know, tweak that a bit. But I usually just use the default XVID and output. We're going to give it a name. I'll just say outro dot AVI, and then we just click animate. And of course, while you're working on a project like this, you'll want to uh, save regularly. Uh, so we're starting to render here. I upped the size of the resolution, so that's why it's kind of big. If I scroll out with my mouse wheel, you'll be able to zoom out. And uh, you get a little reader up here, frames. So we're doing 300 frames. Right now we're on frame three. Now we're on frame four. It's gonna take a little while to render out. Um, so advantages of using Blender over Caden Live. And I do use Caden Live for a lot of stuff and Pain Live is great for something just like this. But advantages, uh, I can think of one or two uh, to using Blender in this sort of setting is one, right now everything's kind of still. None of the stuff is animated and moving around. If I wanted this, one of these planes, these boxes to come flying in or zooming in, you can do that in Caden Live, but I feel at least in the version of Caden Live I have, it's a little jerky. Uh, when it's doing those animations. Blender is designed for doing those sort of animations and will give you a nice, smooth animation. Uh, another thing is, if you wanted to do a little uh, more, you could turn these flat, flat planes into cubes and have them spinning. You can also make the text, you can extrude it and make it look more 3D. So basically just, just you could have a little, you have more options to tweak. Uh, also, both Caden Live and Blender, uh, once you create a project like this and you save it, It'd be very simple just to import 
the new videos. So if you create this project, next time you have some new videos, open up the project again and just replace the videos in the texture settings and you don't have to recreate the same the whole thing over. You could kind of do the same thing in Caden Live, create the project and then just replace the videos. Uh, I think Blender's a little bit easier in that aspect, but either way you can do it with both Caden Live or a blender. So once again, either way, whichever tool you're more comfortable with, you're going to be able to do this quicker in. Um, and so for my blender users, because I do have a lot of blender users, um, this may be more comfortable to you than using Caden Live if you're not used to using Caden Live. Um, but just another option here. I'm going to let this continue rendering out and we'll look at the final uh, view of it here at the uh, very end. Thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. There's links in the description, and I hope that you have a great day. Here's that little render out.